Konnichiwa! Welcome to the return of the New Japan Max Wrestling. I am Daddy Dangerously, joined by the Wrestling Encyclopedia, Mike Larkin. And we have just left our hearts in San Francisco. We have, and Omega, Cody, that ain't family, that's just bullshit. Oh, wow, wow, what a match. What? No, no, not even what a match. What a story, what a finale, what a close, what a full circle. It, oh. Well, it, he made sense. He, he did, Mr. Tongaloa. He didn't say eat shit. Juice Robinson just said eat shit to, to Jay White, but we'll get to that. But number two, he had a point because, well, they are all family, and, well, this was the heart of the Bullet Club, so he has a point. But, you know, it, you know, just fucking, it's the gorillas of destiny, man. Friggin' I, bad luck folly, where does he stand? Omega and Cody are making up. I mean, it was just, what an ending. Absolutely, and we, yes, we will get to that. So, um, obviously, we kicked off with the Gorillas of Destiny, and I love the Gorillas of Destiny. They're just so badass. And fucking Haku's wrestling at 59 years old in this matchup, doing his thing, pile driver on Rocky Romero. King Haku. You... King Haku. <laughs> I, I mean, he goes back even further than this, but I still remember him when, uh, running tag team with Rikishi when he made his first comeback. I remember it. Well, him and Andre the Giant were the tag champs. Yeah. Friggin', oh my God, don't get me started about him and Rikishi. I remember that, him <laughs> and Rikishi feuded with the Brothers of Destruction. But yeah, the match was fine for what it was. It was good. It was a nice showcase. And like you, I do enjoy the girls of Destiny. I'm a big Tama Tonga guy and Tonga Loa. And I thought Chaos was fine. You had Yoshihashi, Gato, Rocky Romero, and Sho and Yo were Pungi 3K. Uh, man, I just thought watching Haku grab Gato by the beard was awesome. And then the cutter <laughs> by, by Tama Tonga for the 1, 2, 3 on Gato. They, they like their beard poles in Japan. Um, yeah, don't grow a beard if you're going to wrestle in Japan. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think, you know, I got the, I'm got i rocking the beard now, so note to self, if I go to Japan, I'm shaving my beard. <laughs> I don't think I got anything to worry about. No. Nah, mine, well, yeah, mine grows like impact ratings. Ooh, wow, okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, you got nothing to worry about, you clean-shaven son of a gun, you. <laughs> um, there was actually quite a few tag matches on the G1 special. Um I forgot to mention at the top of the show, actually, we're covering a G1 special from San Francisco, um, which was last night. So, yeah, obviously, Gorilla Destiny get the victory. Uh, Tamatonga is just an absolute beast and a leader, which uh, kind of sets us up for the end of the show. But we move on mm -hmm. to another tag match uh, between Chaos and Suzuki Gun, uh, Tamahiro Ishii and Yano against Minoru Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. and Paul Yano. You know what it is? It's Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. And we've seen these four mix it up before. Anytime I get to see Ishii and friggin' Suzuki go at it, it's just, oh. man. And then you add the comedy aspect with Yano. And Yano's a great wrestler as well. And Zack Sabre Jr. working on his wrist. And Zack Sabre Jr.'s amazing. But, you know, it was that lariat by uh, Ishii and Yano gets the cover on Zack Sabre Jr. for the win. Personally, I was shocked to see Ishii and Yano win, but either way, I was happy. I thought for what they did, the match was fine. Yeah, I was really surprised to see Yano get the pin. Um, but <laughs> I, I love the standoff at the end when uh, Suzuki, obviously he's a psycho, grabs a steel chair because he lost, and he just comes face to face with Ishii. He's like, no. Nope. Yeah, and, that, well, and then you also get to see Zack Sabre Jr. and Minoru Suzuki beating up the young boys. Yeah. <laughs> As well, usual, they, they were pushing. I I so laughed because they were pushing Suzuki back up the ramp, and he's just trying to shove them away. And on the corner of the screen, you just see Zack Sabre Jr. throw someone down the ramp, <laughs> <laughs> and then walk away. Well, Zack Sabre Jr. is taking on, you know, his buddy, his friend there, Suzuki. So there you go, mannerisms. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love the um, the joint manipulation that um, Sabre Jr. does. That's what I'm saying. Here's a guy who was in the Cruiserweight Classic, opted not to go to WWE, and quite frankly, I'm fine with that because he's doing his thing in New Japan. Yeah. Um, I mean, we talked about it before we started recording. Look at Bobby Roode. Don't don't go to WWE. S save yourself. <laughs> don't. Poor Bobby Don't do Roode. it. 
<laughs> friggin like i said my boy was in action for that msg show last night and just yeah he 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 lost to daz's favorite wrestler mojo Raleigh. wow jeez see i'm so happy we're covering a new japan show because if we show. were covering wwe right now i'd be raging yes luckily exactly. i have new japan to talk about to calm me down but oh man i'm yeah. gonna rage about that on thursday oh god and we also have to rage about brock lesnar on thursday too oh well i mean technically that's not even wrestling related that's ufc that's related. ufc related but it just D- pisses off wrestling fans dc i'm coming for you motherfucker you gotta get past the drugs test first pal Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, first of all, <laughs> the, the, like the first half of this card feel like Teddy Long here, a tag team matches yeah. player. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we had another tag team match up next, which was Hangman Page and Marty Skrull against uh, Tanahashi and Kushida. Uh, every time I see Page in a tag match, he's the MVP of the match. <laughs> The, the man is just great at what he does. I got to just say this right now. And you know what it is, too? I love the whole um, the rite of passage because I think that move is just amazing. I like how he does the uh, the jackknife cover, the roll through, and just hit it at the end there. And everybody looked great. I mean, Marty Skrull's coming upon matches that we have him coming up. We're going to probably see him go against the Hurricane Shane Helms. We're going to see him against Sammy Callahan on the Jericho Cruise. And we're going to see him at Okada at All In. So Marty Skrull's on a friggin high and i just think kushida and tanahashi i mean two legends in japan i think overall again i'm probably gonna be repetitious about this Daz, but man great action from top to bottom yep um can't wait for skrull uh, the villain versus the rainmaker but fuck sammy callahan uh, you know what I, I said this as soon as it was announced and i'll say it here i really hope marty skrull kicks the shit out of sammy he, callahan. He's, he's probably gonna cause the ship to sink and still use it to his advantage <laughs> yes <laughs> but he's got an umbrella <laughs> <laughs> um, so we finally get a singles match uh, with Hiroki Goto defending the never open weight championship or the never open championship as it kept getting referred to uh, against Jeff Cobb aka dude. Lucha Underground's Matanza dude Jeff Cobb is freaking amazing that is one you know big what it dude. is I'm watching this dude do the belly to belly because I've seen him do the belly to belly as Matanz and Lucha Underground. The standing moonsault. The dude for his size, he can work. And Hiroki Goto is Hiroki Goto. Uh, like I said, I would have loved to see Jeff Cobb take it, but I think for what it was, it was a nice showcase for what can we can see going forward with Jeff Cobb. And Hiroki Goto, like I mentioned, just won the title back from Michael Elgin. Big Mike? So... <laughs> Hiroki Goto to do it his thing, and personally, I thought they they worked well, and I think like Jr. and Josh Barnett, you know, they praised Jeff Cobb for his work on commentary, rightfully so. The dude worked hard, and I thought for what they had, again, another great match. Yeah, uh, I love Goto's music, by the way. Me too. So good. Um, yeah, I mean, we were talking while the match was on. I was like, you, if you didn't know, you could never tell Jeff Cobb was Matanza. No, <laughs> he really could not without the whole, all the all some of the mask and just what he wears there. No, yeah, no, you can never tell. Well, he was going for that reverse power slam that he does, Matanza and Lucha Underground. The dude is just big and he's graceful. I've seen him do standing shooting star presses, standing moonsaults. And just the fact, like, the dude is graceful. He's a former Olympian. He's just great at what he does, man. I thought he came off well. Goto came off well. Again, nice showcase for Jeff Cobb and what's to come for him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, apart from the spots where it was obviously showing how good Cobb was, the match was mostly slow-paced. Mm-hmm. Uh, just two big guys wearing each other down. But I was quite surprised, really, that to see um, as Goto got the pin, there was quite a few boos. Obviously, there was a few uh, Lucha fans in the crowd. Well, they're also in California, and the temple is, I believe, California, yeah. so there's a lot of Lucha Underground heads up in there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it didn't last long. I mean, as he got up and his music started playing, they cheered for him again. So it was all good. But yeah, I want to see more of Jeff Cobb. Now, we forgot to also mention this in the beginning. Amir, our homie Amir, was in attendance at this event. Now, he was taking some great videos, so I'm sure he was very impressed with what we saw with Jeff Cobb. And I'm I'm sure he had a quick change of heart during the interval when it was a big announcement. Uh, Feel free to take photos, but please, no videos. No videos. 
no videos. <laughs> <laughs> like shit, I mean, put your phone away. Put your put your phone away, Amir. <laughs> put it away. Um, the next match there was a highlight for me. I think it was about three minutes into the match. It was really really early, um, and it was essentially a human centipede deathlock. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Well, <laughs> it's so funny because I'm watching the move. I'm like, whoa. And then my dad, he's sitting there watching. He goes, what the fuck was that? I'm like, <laughs> like I don't know, but it was cool. The, the funniest thing about it was the two guys at the front, neither of them were reacting to the move. They were just like down on the floor, head between the legs, nothing happening. Mm. <laughs> But yes, Young Bucks, Los Ingobernables de Japón, Sonata, and Evil. Man, for what they did, they killed it. Uh, Meltzer Driver, of course, scores the win on the chair. Uh, man, I'm still calling it the Indy Taker because I get angry if I call it the Meltzer Driver because... Yeah, it's it's the Indy Taker. It's the Indy Taker. It's not the Meltzer Driver. Five stars. No. So, what again? Stars. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We broke the we broke the rating system. We broke the rating system. No, but dude, it's Young Bucks and Los Ingobernables. Uh, it was just great from top to bottom. Yeah, um, there was actually a lot of death locks. I think Matt went for during the match. Um, I think there was a lot of evil and um in momentum. No, evil sent te- tended to be in control of the match for the majority of it. The thing with Evil is, I think with him, you got to showcase him because I got to say this right now. After what we saw with Naito and Jericho and Jericho winning that title and that, and Evil coming to help out the leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón, we got to get Jericho and Evil down the line for that IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see what Jericho does next. After the cruise, of course, because uh, impact, impact. (laughs) No, Uh, no. Don't even say it. Don't. It's not happening because everybody's going to be like, oh, he's going there. He's friends with Don Callis. Yeah, he's friends with Don Callis. He'll help by putting the talent on there, but he's not going to cross the line, pun intended. <laughs> hey, go over there. Just stop it. Uh, um, but yeah. Something of a rarity in New Japan matches. Uh, we saw a ref bump. Poor ref. Yeah. Like a double super kick. I saw the double super kick to the ref. And, and you know what is too? Sonata. That's another one, if you want to mention that other company. Former X Division yeah. champion. Look at him in Japan doing his thing in Los Ingobernables de Japón. Yeah, he, he really struggled in Impact. Um, I'm not sure if it was a language barrier or what, but um, I, th- I think he may have said uh, in an interview once that uh, it can be quite difficult sometimes, you know, because his English isn't fantastic and it's a largely American company. Yeah, but like I said, the dude has come leaps and bounds with that mohawk of his. Him and yeah. Evil, Young Bucks, they delivered. Young Bucks still the tag champs. Uh, who would you like to see them go against next for the IWGP Tag Team Championships? I mean, Bucks are on fire every every time I see them. Um... <laughs> so just bring them all. Bring them all. Yeah. I think Suzuki Gun's got to be in there. I'd love to see them against Minoru Suzuki and Zack Sabre Jr. Yano and Ishii, like we saw. I think there's a lot of possibilities. The Gorillas of Destiny. Hello? Hello? Yeah. So, yes. Well, I mean, now that the uh, the Civil War is in full effect, I mean, we could um, get them against the Tongans. Mm-hmm. So, see how it goes. the possibilities. The yes. possibilities. So, um, as we said, Ref got bumped with a double superkick, and then Evil took a double superkick with a steel chair. Uh, then we said, Wait a minute, wait a minute, I got a song to sing to that, and you know what that is? What? Hot potato, hot potato, <laughs> let me throw the chair, let me throw it back, hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> um, then we had the indie driver, indie taker, which is what we're calling it. Um, was going to be on the chair, but it was blocked by Sonata, and then Matt took one instead. Luckily, though, the Bucks fought back to win, and actually did get the indie taker in the end. Um, move on to another tag match. Tag matches galore at the G1 special. Um, but we kind of got a little preview as the as JR and Josh kept pointing out of a the possible final between Naito and Okada. Ooh, 
You know I'm down for that, man, what they did at Wrestle Kingdom. But, dude, uh, this match with Osprey and Naito and Bushi, everybody clicked. And I got to say, I love Osprey's finisher. Oh, it's so good. The Stonebringer. Yes, I was I was wondering what the heck the name of the move was. Cause I, remember you, I remember you sending it, and you were saying, dude, I love Osprey's move. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. well, that, what's it? It's kind of like, it's got like a double underhook, and then it's like a, into like a spinning neck breaker. It's like a spinning neck breaker type deal, right? Yeah. Um, I, I honestly don't know how to describe it, really. <laughs> you just sort it's, of, it's when the shoulders spin around and then bang. Um, it's an amazing move, and, and, and Okada and Osprey showed each other off, and Naito doing his thing, Bushi doing his thing, and of course Bushi's got to take the fall on this, because if you're going to build with Okada and Naito in the G1, Bushi unfortunately had to take the fall. Yeah, he, he just got the short straw. Um, but I always remember the name of Osprey's move, because he introduced it shortly after Infinity but, War came out. So obviously he's a big four fan. Oh, yeah, and you know what it is, too? When I see him do that Spanish fly, I just think about when he did that and he landed on his dome and busted his head open, so I'm like, oh, he's got to be careful with that. Well, Osprey does need to be careful a lot. I mean, I've seen him take some dangerous hits oh, quite yeah. often. Um, yeah. Uh, I think me and Butcher are still a little bit iffy towards Will Osprey. I mean, he's good, and we like him, but, yeah, he scares us. Mm-hmm. Um, junior heavyweight championship. No time wasting. Straight into it, just taking each other down. Um, Hiromu Takahashi and Dragon Lee. Dude, great match. Holy crap, man! I've seen Dragon Lee do his thing in CMLL, Ring of Honor. The guy is amazing. And if you want to talk about Suplex City, that's how you do Suplex City in the matchup. German after German after German. Let me drop you on your dome piece. It was just, it was great. It was really, really good. Yeah, they actually started yeah, they the Suplex the City chance. <laughs> like, hello. But still, man, it was, I think what they did, these guys always have great matches. And the time bomb for the win. And just, you know, the Canadian destroyer there inverted there by Hiromu Takahashi. <clears throat> I love Takahashi. I think Dragon Lee is just amazing what he does. These two killed it from bell to bell. Yeah, very, very highly competitive. Big moves back and forth. And I did get terrified at one point uh, with the release Dragon Driver. And Takahashi just kind of lands tucked straight oh onto his head. Oh, my God. I was cringing. I'm like, oh, my God, is he okay? And the best is the ref looks at him. He goes, are you okay? And he smiles, and he just <laughs> nods. Just like, you sick son of a bitch, you. That's why I love him. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, of course, it's double main event time. Well, I don't know. Did, did, did they advertise it as a double main event? Because I was looking forward to both these matches equally. Uh, well, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, motherfucker, but yeah, it was more about Omega and Cody as the main event, but yeah. Juice Robinson and Jay White, holy shit, man, just Jay White pissing off the crowd, fuck you, Switchblade, oh, yeah. gives finger, oh my god, work it, I mean, if he hit him with his hand there, he'd be disqualified, just, it was a one, one-handed one man doing, just fighting his heart out, Jay White pissing everybody off, Throws him into the guardrail. There goes Jr. Where's my hat? Oh, you're done fucked up now. Josh Barnett gets up, freaking legit is going after Jay White. Looks at the crowd, see the motherfucker run. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! You, you forget yeah. how big Josh Barnett is, but everybody's the same size when they're sitting down. That is true. The dude's like 6'3", 250, and you're just like, oh, my God. But And the thing is, too, with JR, you don't want to piss off anybody. And it's, Well, the thing is, you don't want to fuck with JR because no. then you got Josh Barnett sitting with you, and he'll go after him, and it's just Oh, my hot. God. I love how angry JR got. Uh, can, can, the, can we get a control here? What, what the hell with this shit with the officials? Can we get some control here? Can we actually get a count getting all pissed off at Red Shoes? Like, damn. I mean, when he got back up, he just sort of mumbled to himself, the officials need to get their shit together. I loved it. <laughs> it was just real. And the, well, we'll talk about what he said when we went off the air because, you know, his ass was going home to Oklahoma. But, man, <laughs> this JR was at point here. You could tell he was getting pissed. And, well, the barricades, were how they were set up. We saw it in Omega and Cody. The poor Japanese announcer got the barricade right on his leg. Yeah. Oh. Somebody needs to nail them bastards down. Fuckers. Um, 
But yeah, Red, Red Shoes was very lenient in this match, very much to the dismay of JR. Every time he like let him go and didn't call anything, he was like, JR was getting pissed off. Like, can, can we have some officials here? <laughs> they need to get their shit together. Can somebody make the count? We just got to let them fight outside the ring. What is this, no rules? <laughs> Just watching JR go off was amazing. Juice Robinson and them did what they did. Man, the friggin' just going back and forth. The Blade Runner, you know, the Pulp Friction, the God of Hand. Man, it was just an amazing match top to bottom, but the match ends with a schoolboy roll-up. He'll roll a motherfucker up. That's what Juice <laughs> Robinson says. He'll roll a motherfucker up. New U.S. champ. He warned us. He did. He said he'd roll a motherfucker up, and he did. He, he, rolled, he US... rolled up Okada, he rolled up Omega, and now he's rolled up Jay White. Man, that match. Oh, by the way, I love Josh Barnett's comment. Oh, I'll, I'll, don't worry, Jay. I'll see you later. Because <laughs> you know Barnett's going to have a talking to him about what he did. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, great match. Great win for Juice. Um, really really yeah. came out of nowhere, really, to roll up. Now, if you would like, since this per- this kind of pertains to what we're talking about here, Daz, man, Juice Robinson had some things to say after winning that championship. Are you ready? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I told you, Jay. I told you. <laughs> Even a blind squirrel finds a nut. Yeah. Every once in a while, man. I had a squirrel. I got 2020 vision, baby. The only nuts I care about are these two dangling between my legs. And that's what I fought with tonight. Heart, nuts. Obviously, fucking broken metacarpal, good God almighty. Uh, I'm already in pretty shitty jape. Pretty shitty jape. I'm already in pretty <laughs> shitty shape. Just because I like to drink beer. But I only have one hand. Uh, the bike ain't gonna do it. Holy shit, anybody who says the titles don't matter in this business can burn in hell. All right, let's be honest. Titles don't matter? If titles don't matter, then why the hell are we doing this? Titles do fucking matter. Titles matter. And the United States Championship matters. It matters. And you know what? Now, juice matters. All of a sudden, presto change -o. You leave fucking a NXT, the only place that's supposed to matter. The only place it's supposed to matter. I was told the last thing that I said when I left NXT, King and Seaman told me. He looked at me and he said, CJ Parker, I'll actually use my shoot name, oh. Joe Robinson. He said, Joe, go out and make yourself a star. Oh my God. Look, it's taken three years, but I landed on my feet. That's right. Hot boy. I landed on my fucking feet. Fast forward three years. WWE, NXT, all that shit, everything that you guys constantly ask me about, I know because that's what we talk about. That's what we talk about. We talk about WWE. But that's in the rearview mirror now, and guess what? I ain't going back. I ain't ever going back. It's okay because guess what? Guys like Cody Rhodes, guys like Kenny Omega, more guys like that, Will Ospreay, the big stars, the big independent stars. No, independent. Yeah, you can take that and shove it up your ass. They're stars, baby. And I might not be a star yet, but I'm getting there. So titles do matter. And guess what, Canyon Seaman? I'm doing my damnedest to make myself a star. Thank you guys very much. If you got any damn questions, uh, feel free to shoot them. What was that three count like? That when that three count hit, what was that? Uh, oh man, well, I was hurt. I was hurt. I was hurting. I was hurting the superplex, all this, those fences. Holy cow! I was in a lot of pain. I thought, I thought on the Paul Friction, I thought I beat him, and I, he didn't. Oh, he kicked out of that. I punched him in the face with a broken hand, with a cast. Look at that, who wants to get a shot of that? This right here, under that, that's steel. That's steel, that's why I can't use it. But, you know what? Jay hit me in the nuts. Hit me right directly in the fucking nutsack. One man does that to another man. The rules go out the window, brother. Uno didn't see it. Yes, I used the left hand of God. Yes, I cheated, but guess what? Everybody cheats. Everybody cheats, but I still gotta act. Right. Uh, yeah, when so it went one, two, three, and I realized that one, when I realized that I finally became what I set out to do, what I wanted to do my whole life, be a wrestler, be a champion, I couldn't even cry. I don't even know, I couldn't even, I, it was just, I didn't even, I don't know what was happening. I don't even know the emotion. It was all the fucking emotions. At once, do you have a word for that? Because I don't. I was happy, I was surprised, I, uh, I was hurt, all these things. Oh my gosh. I didn't answer your question at all. No, Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I felt a whole shitload of stuff that I can't describe. Uh, now my hand's starting to hurt more. Does it, does it mean anything to you to be the first American born United States? You're damn States? right it does. Yeah. It matters. Any championship matters to me, but to be the first one, after especially who our first champion is, don't forget who that was, the best wrestler alive today, Kenny Omega. 
all right? He, then Jay White catches him. Okay, Jay White, he's not Kenny Omega yet, but guess what? He might get pretty damn close one of these days, and I'm gonna be nipping on his fucking heels, all right? Kenny Omega, he's what, 35, 36 years old? Jay's 25, I'm 29. We got a few more years at this, all right? It felt really good, it felt really good. And look at that, that's the red, white, and blue, brother. I'm sorry I lied, I said I was gonna come with Sparkler shooting out of my nipples and bald eagles launching out of my ass. Well, apparently there's building codes and violations that can be broken and I couldn't do that. But hell, I wore three musketeers, hat, light up glasses, and one of the most flamboyant things ever possible. Any so yeah, it feels really damn good. You said you oh. Any thoughts on what happened to Jim Ross during the match? I don't know what happened to Jim Ross because I was on top of my head on my stack of dimes seeing stars. I have no idea. I know when I got up, the first thing I heard was, where's my hat? And I thought, <laughs> even there was a Jim Ross without a, without a cowboy hat. That's like, is he all right? Was he, is he okay? Wasn't it fitting though that in Juice Roberts and wanted to roll up? Isn't that perfect? Isn't that poetic? I told everybody, I'll roll a motherfucker up. And I will continue to roll motherfuckers up. You know why? Because my heroes rolled motherfuckers up. Shawn Michaels rolled up Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 19. Woo! Bret Hart rolled up all kinds of motherfuckers. Bam Bam Bigelow, 1993, King of the Ring, one, two, three. All right? Owen Hart sat on his own brother's shoulder, WrestleMania 10. Roll up, one, two, three. What's wrong with a roll up? Nothing. That's good old fashioned wrestling 101. I'm a baby face. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'll roll the motherfucker up. I'll continue to roll the motherfucker up. And just when they think, oh my God, I don't want to get rolled up, I'll hit him with the left handed guy and drop him on their stack of dimes with Paul Frisch. All right? I don't think there's anything wrong. Sorry, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Congratulations. You want to pose with the belt for us? Juice Robinson. I wish everybody in the world would cut a promo like Juice Robinson. That was one of the most heartfelt, <laughs> passionate promos. I, I didn't oh. even answer your question. I didn't even answer your question. <laughs> I'll roll the motherfucker up. Shawn Michaels, Chris Jericho, Bam Bam Bigelow, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Bret Hart. My heroes roll motherfuckers up. Wow. What a guy. <clears throat> really, really. Congratulations to Juice Robin, the third ever IWGP US champ, the first American to hold that championship. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, juice, juice, juice. Just just give me more juice, man. You're never and going back to NXT. He is. N okay. Now, he says that, but I'll be honest with you, I kind of believe him. I believe him. He doesn't even need to go back. Just, just keep doing his thing in New Japan. No, I noticed that the first person he mentioned was Cody, who's obviously made a massive name for himself since leaving WWE. He don't need WWE. He doesn't. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, we move on to the main event for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Cody challenging Kenny Omega. With the stipulation that the winner becomes the official leader of the Bullet Club. What a match. Oh my I'm god. I'm going to say this right now. If they were going to do that superplex off the ladder into that table, I was like, no. Please, God, no. But then he superplexed him right back into the ring, and I'm like, oh, shit. Just just clear something up. Was this a no-DQ match? No. They just brought in TLC. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Red Shoes is like, all right, whatever. I'll allow it. And it's just freaking, here comes a table. Here comes a chair. Here comes a, here comes a ladder. TLC. 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 And the guy just tore it up and down, man. Just friggin' watching. Oh, like I mentioned, the Japanese announcer getting the uh, barricade right on his leg there, just hurting in pain. Just watching him, just friggin' Cody taking that power bomb on the table. He comes up short. The table doesn't even break, Daz. Oh, Co man. Cody's in pain. His wife, Brandy's right there looking. He's pretty much saying, no, stop the match. You can tell she's getting upset. Both men just killed each other. The Young Bucks are trying to, like, Calm down there, boys, like you're taking it too far. Matt Jackson gets a shove by Cody Rhodes. And in the end, we just see Kenny Omega, one-winged angel, one, two, three. Kenny's still the champ. But top to bottom, what a match. Jim Ross must hate red shoes. <clears throat> in the back of his mind, that son of a bitch is being lenient that again. son of a bitch red shoes, man. It's that son of a bitch red shoes. <laughs> Goddamn son of a bitch red shoes. I've never seen so many weapons introduced into a standard rules match. Well, it, it's so funny because, like I said, watching it with the folks, my mom goes, is this match an ODQ? I'm like, no. Yeah. They're just letting him go. They're just letting him go. Um, uh, the crowd was very anti-Cody right from the start. Um, and, of course, he busts out the classic heel move as Brandy blocks the rise of the Terminator. Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, <clears throat> I think Matt said it best, dude, the fact that, you know, there's some Cody fans here tonight, but they are outnumbered. Yeah. Um, I think the tide turned, actually, after the the double foot stomp off the guardrail through the table. After that, the whole match just went all out. <sighs> Tables, ladders, chairs. Oh my! Oh my. <laughs> so you can pretty much say that not all, besides being all out, they were all in in that matchup. Nice pun. They yes. were all in. Um, as you mentioned, yeah, Kenny got thrown into the guardrail, which crushed. I don't know if it was the commentator. It just crushed into someone's knee. No, that was I think the timekeeper, the ring announcer, the one that was in there and uh, announcing them uh, in Japanese. Because I was wondering why is he sat on his own and why is it just going? Oh, he just crushed that guy's knee. Yeah, no, that that was the guy that was announcing them in Japanese. That's okay. that was the ring announcer for the night, and he got the poor he got the poor barricade right on his knee, and you could see him holding and writhing in pain. Yeah, somebody needs to sort those guardrails out. They really do. Um, then we had the huge superplex spot off the top of the ladder. Wow! Just all I can say is wow. Oh. I. Uh, if I if I was a fingernail biter, I wouldn't have any fingernails left because that was a f- nail biting moment. It was. Now, dude, I gotta say this as well because, like we mentioned, the match top to bottom was great. Kenny gives him the thumbs up after that. Here comes the rest of Bullet Club, and to be honest with you, I could kind of tell maybe I'm like, no, don't tell me the grills of destiny are gonna hit him because I could see Haku's the look on his face was like, all right, yeah, Bullet Club. Not really, motherfuckers. And then here comes Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa just going ape shit on the Bullet Club, destroying everybody in sight. Here comes Adam Page. Here comes Marty Skrull. Here comes, you know, Omega and all them. Then Cody gingerly comes down. And you're like, oh, man, Cody's going to be with them. But no, here's the chair. Cody takes a beating after taking a beating for X amount of minutes in that matchup. And just, oh, dude, I mean, what a way to kick it off. I kind of knew something was up because the Tangans were kind of hanging back mm-hmm. and the camera was long. You know, they were on camera for just a little bit too long, just sort of, this isn't over yet. It's not. And, like, their T-shirt says, Firing Squad, Daz, Firing Squad. Yeah, it was like uh, when Champa turned on Gargano, you kind of thought, there's, there's something else that's coming up here. This, this isn't the end of it. Um, but, yeah, man. Oh, this... man. Dude, All hell broke this... loose. Yes, it did, but just the moment, because we had the moment of them getting their asses kicked. Then Kenny and Cody hug. Bullet Club is fine as far as that Bullet Club is gone. Man, just everybody doing the too sweet and hugging. So there's a feel-good moment there, but what's going on with Ibushi, which you have to think, Golden Elite, you know, them all together. And first, another thing, what's going on with Bad Luck Folly? What are his thoughts on this? Yeah, well, Folly, where you at? Well, yeah, Folly, and then (laughs) just... Just what a show. Just the, how that capped off. And again, JR signing us out with my ass is going back to Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it was a full implosion. Like, one member at a time came down to try and help. Um, who was first? Paige came first, then Marty, yeah. then Chase and Yujiro. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then poor Chase and Yujiro, man. They get taken out. The man's a pimp. I mean, you've seen him. You've seen Yujiro. The man's a pimp. He yep. walks up with Kane, and he's just doing his thing. He's a soul taker. You don't you don't crush somebody like that. But I did pop hard for um, Cody's face turn. Oh, dude, it was it was so good. Just because I'm like, please, no. The reason why I say please, no, I'm like, man, they can continue with the Cody thing, but it's just like after that, you saw the sportsmanship there and the thumbs up, and you're just thinking to yourself, please hit the gorillas of destiny. And he did, and he took one for the team, so... Bullet Club on that aspect is fine. Bullet Club is fine. Bullet Club is they fine. They just got to deal with a firing squad. Oh, now, it's going to be interesting to see who goes with them because right now it's just the Gorilla to Destiny, and you think Bad Luck Fale because yeah. well, you know they're all boys, but who else is going to go with them, man? Because that we got to get more people in there. We're obviously going to see the Young Bucks probably go against the Gorillas of Destiny now. IWGP Tag Titles. It, it just it's an interesting dynamic. It yeah. really is. I mean, obviously, I can't see any Bullet Club members jumping shit because they beat the shit out of all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like, all right, because I'll be honest with you. When I saw Yujiro come out and Chase Owens, I'm like, okay, so you got those guys against them. But then I'm like, oh, shit, they're kicking the shit out of Yujiro and Chase Owens. So it's like, all right. So now we have something different. We have something new with the Tongans. This is real family. Omega and Cody, fuck that bullshit. There it is. Wow. 
say it, don't spray it, Tongaloa. Man, hey. And he didn't even say eat shit like I mentioned. Juice Robinson told Jay White to eat shit. No eat shit there, but hey, we got bullshit. Tongaloa. Like I say, every time I go back with Tongaloa, I'm like, WWE, you had him. And you could have done something with him. You put him with Unico. Impact. He was Micah. Don't get me started on that. But anyway, Tongaloa doing his thing. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Oh, so, yeah. Great night. Great event. If you haven't seen it yet, maybe you should. Um, I mean, you've got a week before the G1 Climax kicks off. Yeah. And, oh, and so many great matches in the opening week. Um, I'll just run through a Hello. few of them. Uh, so, opening day, we've got Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Suzuki. Uh, we've got Michael Elgin and the Evil. We've got Okada versus Jay White. Um, July 15th, we've got Juice Robinson and Tamatonga, which is going to be very interesting now. Um, oh, man. Kenny Omega and Na- Naito. Yes. Kota Ibushi and Zack Sabre Jr. And that's just yes. in the first two days. Now, I'm looking forward to that. I definitely will check that out. But, man, 6,333 in attendance last night. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad at all. Uh, and I love Kenny Omega's speech, by the way, to the crowd. Even talk about the guy working at the popcorn stand and just showing love to everybody. Kenny's all about spreading the love. That's what it is. Change the world. Hashtag change the world. And, of course, he says Cody deserves a second chance. Reminded me of Shinedown, which sometimes goodbye is a second chance. But in this case, yeah. Cody Rhodes deserves that second chance. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, we can't wait for the uh, G1 Climax, which kicks off July 14th, um, 9.30 a.m. for the UK. Ugh, 4.30 a.m. for you, Mike. <laughs> like I said, I'll try to catch up on that, man. But, yeah, 4.30 in the morning for us over there, over here in the United States. I mean, oh. Day two, it gets a little better. It um, starts at 1 a.m. for you, 6 a.m. for the UK. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now you get into bit. UK territory. We, we watch pay per views at one AM, which I did well, last night. Which you, which you did, yes. As I'm like, <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, I know you're gonna watch this, but I'm like, technically speaking, he should be sleeping because it's like one o'clock in the morning where you guys are. But you're like, fuck that. I'm not sleeping. I'm watching the G1. It, uh, it became daylight before I went to sleep. Are you serious? Oh yeah. Oh. The sun was up. The birds were singing. What time did you wind up going to sleep? Because I know when I when we woke up, uh, you were tired. I was tired. What time did you wind up going to sleep? It was past five. Oh, dude. <laughs> because I remember looking at the clock and like about four o'clock in the morning, and it was um. Uh, who was on? I think it was the Young Bucks and Evil and And I'm thinking there's two matches left. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> And one of them features Kenny Omega. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's the sacrifice but what, that we do with the, with these podcast games and just talking about wrestling. Like I said, we may sound repetitious with these shows, but New Japan is a product that delivers. And if you want to just see straight up pro wrestling and just at its finest pro wrestling, you watch New Japan Pro Wrestling. That, that's the thing, and that that's why so many more people are going to watch New Japan now. But uh, as we saw last night, they also now and again give us some great stories mm-hmm. you get a whole whole lot of i'll put it at that whole yeah. lot of new japan and not a single therapy session in sight no <laughs> <laughs> you no, imagine no. tamatango and kenny omega with dr shelby Please. i was about to say don't page dr <laughs> shelby oh my god the girls of destiny they be ta- telling dr shelby eat shit motherfucker <laughs> And then he'll be talking like, no, and probably getting all Dr. Shelby mad like he did with Team Hell No, like, no, ah, stop it. Tango just stands up, fuck your cue cards. Fuck your cue cards. <laughs> it's the motherfucking Bullet Club. Well, no longer the motherfucking Bullet Club. This is the motherfucking Girls of Destiny, the motherfucking Fire Squad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that that's going to do it for New Japan Max Wrestling. We've finally done another episode. Uh, hopefully yes. we'll do some more during the G1 Climax because it's going to run for an entire month, 29 days. Uh, July 14th to August 12th. Good times. Good summer. Um, but we will be back uh, before the week is over to discuss 
other wrestling and sports entertainment. Uh, thank you for listening. Don't forget, you can find us at Max Wrestling on SoundCloud and Podomatic, and look for us on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher, and of course on Facebook at Max Wrestling UK. You are all very welcome to join us on our Facebook group at Max Wrestling Interactive. You can find me at Darcy MWP. Mike is available at at SM Show One or at MCL ninety two on the evil Twitter machine, and SoundCloud is MC Larkin ninety two. Uh, the butcher is not with us, um, but he should be with us for the usual Max Wrestling podcast uh, in a few days. You can find him at Six Nine Butcher or outside your window. And remember our other Danger Zone production shows. You can catch up with the whole first season of Throne Zone now at Throne Zone UK Series Two coming very very soon. And Screen Gems has finally also returned with our first episode uh, covering Predator. You can find that at DB Screen Gems. And as I said, join us on Friday for the Max Wrestling Podcast for Extreme Rules Predictions. And we prepare for the G1 Climax and more. We must wait, now... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, before you... Oh. Oh, you gotta pause. Pause. Roll back. <laughs> Roll back. What did before I miss? You, no, before you even do the outro, we go from this show... To extreme rules. Yeah. Uh, not so extreme rules. Not so rules. extreme rules. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had to say because we had this. It's a week. It's one of those weeks now. Like I said, I had to say this before you did your whole outro, but I did, sorry for interrupting, but I just have to say we go from this to that. It's one of those like you had Wrestle Kingdom and then there's the Royal Rumble or there's whatever and then there's this WWE pay per view. But yeah, we went from the G1 to this. The freaking main event was more extreme than anything we'll probably see at Not So Extreme Rules, and this was a singles match. Yep. Yep. Uh, Again, sorry for interrupting. As you can tell, we're looking forward to this Sunday's pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. I'm so (laughs) excited to talk about Extreme Rules. I'm I'm so excited to see see two Extreme Rules matches at a pay-per-view called Extreme Rules. I'm so excited to just see two matches that have stipulations. One's a 30-minute Iron Man match, which is just the most falls in 30 minutes. Yeah, I know extreme. Not, it's not extreme, but it's a grueling matchup, but it's not an Extreme Rules match. And the only Extreme Rules match is Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. That's it. Good times. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but fear not, because uh, the day before... The G1 Climax kicks off, so that is true. that's good. Is it? No. Actually, no, sorry. Uh, six days later, the G1 Climax kicks off, so that'll help you get over not so extreme rules. So, there we go. We must now bid you adieu. Goodbye. Mwah. And good night.